Hare Krishna. Now we will hear about the story of Prahlad Maharaj. This is an article written by His Holiness Satsvarup Das Goswami. From the most ripened Vedic wisdom Srimad Bhagavatam comes the story of sublime devotion. Prahlad Maharaj was a boy who at age 5 preached to his school fellows of their urgent need for taking to Krishna consciousness without delay. Prahlad was a son of a very powerful Atish king Hiranyakashipu and so from the moment of his birth he was in the hands of Daityas or enemies of God. The nurse who picked him up, the court attendants, his mother, the court children all were obsessed with the illusion that the body is the self and there was no talk of Krishna, the Supreme Spirit. Like most boys born into our contemporary civilization, Prahlad's chances for hearing any truth about the Supreme Personality of Godhead were almost nil. And yet, every day when the teacher would take a recess and leave the palace schoolroom, this five-year-old boy would address him, his fellow friends in this way. My dear atheist friends, now is the time to prosecute Krishna consciousness. Why we are still young? Listen, my fellow demons, we have to start now. I know you want sense gratification, but we have to start Krishna consciousness immediately or we will never get out of the material entanglement. This material world will soon become too complicated and we won't be able to get out. We will be like silkworms dropped in our own cocoons. Understandingly, when Prahlad spoke, the boys would only say, Let us play, Prahlad. We are only children. We are only five years old. We can do Krishna consciousness when we get older. Yes, Prahlad would respond. I know you want to play, but just listen a moment. There is no need to try so hard for sense gratification. That happiness will come without any endeavor. According to whatever body you have, that arrangement is already made by nature and will come to itself, just as misery will come. But there is a need to develop an understanding of what the dearmost thing in life is. Each of us is looking for his dearmost friend. That dearmost friend is the Supreme Lord Krishna. He is everyone's heart. He will make us sat satisfy forever. We can just chant his name Hare Krishna and we will be linked with him and he will dedicate to us how to come to him. Gradually, the boys began to listen. Where did you get this excellent knowledge from? They asked, you are like us, only five years old, and like us you never leave the palace grounds. It's not possible for you to go and take some instructions outside, and our teachers never have taught us this. Where did you learn it? The answer was that Prahlad had listened Krishna consciousness from the foremost sage of Vedic times, Narad Muni, and he had learned it while still in the womb of his mother. It had, it had come about that Prahlad's mother was pregnant at the time of a great war between the demigods and the demons. The demigods were led by Indra and the demons were party of Hiranyakashipu. The victorious demigods eventually swept over the cities of the demon king and ransacked his deserted buildings. King Indra himself had entered the palace of Hiranyakashipur and was leading off Prahlad's mother, the queen, when Narada appeared and interposed. Do not take her. It is not right, for she is chaste, he said. Indra answered, I am not doing anything wrong, good Narada, but she is carrying a child within her womb, who is Hiranyakashipur's son. She is therefore carrying a snake and I just want to keep her in custody until he until the child is born and we can take him away. I had no other purpose. No, Narada protested. She is carrying a great soul within her womb. 
Don't try to kill him, Indra. Nor in fact could you kill him, since he is a great devotee. Solely on the word of the pure Saint Narada, Indra relinquished his design and the queen was allowed to go with the saint to his hermitage. Narada gave her shelter at his ashram and as he was a very great devotee, he spoke the spiritual signs of Krishna consciousness to her daily. Prahlad, who had developed within her womb to the point of consciousness, heard all this discussions and he did not forget. Actually, every human child affair, uh, attains a con confirmation with God just before the time of birth. It is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam that the purpose of development within the womb is extremely painful for the child as he has to live in a camp cramped position near gastric fire and stool and urine. Just at the time of birth, conditions become unbearable and he then prays to the Supreme Lord who is seated within his heart as the super soul. The child promises that if the Lord will just get him out of this predicament, he will become a sincere devotee of God and so will never again have to take birth again. Once he is cut, however, within the shock of entering into the material world, the living entity loses all memory of his promise to God. And in addition, from the first moment after birth, he is in the hands of nurses, friends and relatives who are themselves under the illusion that the goal of the life is sense gratification and who mistakens the body as a self so the child forgets. But Prahla did not forget Krishna. He told his Daitya fellow just how life is wasted. Non-believers just look. How long can you live? Say at most 100 years? And the first 20 years are all spent in playing balls and sporting. That's 20 years wasted with no spiritual development. Then during the middle 40 years, sex is very prominent and those years are all spent in the pursuit of sex pleasure. Sex life begins when you meet a girl and you think she is nice and then when there is sex, the root of attachment is made. Then you get married and you have children. You must earn to support your family and for all the work you are doing, you need some recognition, some prestige. So you must labor, labor for that and at the same time serve your family so that they can expand in wealth and material happiness. Just under conditions there is no chance of getting out of material dead bond existence. There is no time for finding out Vishnu, God, the dearmost thing in life. So calculate, 20 years is in sporting, 40 years in sex life and marriage life, then at the end of life, the last 20 years, the feeble and invalid, or even if a man has good health, he remains enamored up to the last moment, playing with his found grandchild and making no preparation for spiritual life. So where is the time for Krishna? If a man spends his life in this way, always attracted to the non-permanent and forgotful of his real self-interest, the eternal Vishnu within the heart, then at the time of death, he will fall back among the struggling lower species of life and have to take another body as an animal. That is why, demon brothers, we have to take action in this youthful age while we are still unattached to such thing. Only by cutting free of the material consciousness of life can we realize who we are. I am not this body, I am eternal spirit soul. Come, put your faith in the authority of Narada and you can derive the same benefit as I have. The news of Prahlad's preaching ultimately reached back to Hiranyakashipu and he called his son's teacher before him. What is this Hare Krishna? He demanded to know. I understand all the boys are chanting some nonsense about God. Tell me now what are you teaching my Prahlad? 
the Srimad Bhagavatam states that at this time Hiranyakashipur had come to dominate all planetary system by ruthless force. He had gained such great power by performing an exaggerating austerity. He had stood on his toes with his arms upraised and reminded in that position uninterrupted for 125 years. Hiranyakashipur had so frightened the demigods by this that they had run to their supreme leader Lord Brahma, the prime living entity and creator of the material universe. What can this man want? They asked Lord Brahma, please go and grant him some boon so that he may be satisfied before he becomes too powerful and causes great disturbance. Lord Brahma at once approached Hiranyakashipur and asked him what his wish was. The demon king asked to be made immortal. You must ask for something else, Lord, Lord Brahma replied. I myself am born some time to die. Thereupon Brahma confirmed a boon upon Hiranyakashipur which made him invincible invincible in all the material worlds he could never be killed by man or beast nor at night nor in the daytime he would never be killed on earth nor on the sea nor in the air nor by any weapon with this power conferred upon him assuming himself unconquerable hiranyakashipu took up the business of dominating all the universe for his personal pleasure. So great was his might that it is said that the demigods would tremble at the mere upraising of his eyebrows. Prahlad's teacher, however, had not committed any offense before Hiranyakashipu. Sir, they explained, we do not know where your son has learned this Hare Krishna from, but he is ruining our whole school. We have only taught mathematics, economics, history and the other subjects, so we don't know where he has got it from. But he is preaching to the other children every day whenever he can. Hiranyakashipu then called his son before him. The father was a materialistic and he wanted his son to get a good education so that the boy would be advanced in the attainment of money and beautiful women. The very name of the demon king indicates this. Hiranya means soft bed and Kashipu means gold. These were the basic principle of his life. The father now sat Prahlad on his knee and with affection asked his boy, What is the best thing you have learned from your teachers? Prahlad replied honestly to his father. O oh, foremost of atheists, he said openly, I haven't learned anything good at all from my teachers, but I do, I do know the best thing. Oh, what and what is the best thing? I have heard that the best thing is to leave the stark dwell of material life and to take shelter of Krishna, the Lord. This answer caused the break that could not be repaid for the father was a determined atheist and the son a firm devotee of Krishna. Tell me, Hiranyakashipur continued, what, what is this teaching that you could not learn from our Brahmins? What is this teaching of Krishna? he demanded. The boy replied, My dear atheist father, if I told you, you could not know, and so I cannot even bother. If you took courses in it, still you would not understand because you are too attached to sense gratification. Hiranyakrashipur grew angry at this and threatened his son, but Prahlad was unflickering. He simply remembered the teaching of Narada and took shelter in thinking of the form of Lord. To every question and demand of his father, Prahlad answered in terms of love of Krishna, his protector. The father, who was unaccustomed to the slightest hint of insubordination, finally took hold of the boy and personally dragged him outdoors to a nearby cliff. With uncontrollable fury, he threw Prahlad into the abs. However, all pervading Krishna caught hold of his devotee and saved him from the intended destruction. 
Hiranyakashipu now became all the more livid with anger determination and he set to work to destroy the life of Prahlad by one mean or other. He set a great pot of water boiling and thrust the boy into it. But Prahlad was not hurt. He tried to freeze the boy in a snowstorm and he tried to have him torn apart by the winds of the hurricane. But Prahlad was in a direct spiritual communion with Krishna and so he was at all time protected by the intervention of his worshipable Lord. Hiranyakashipur obsessed threw his sign into a son into a pit of snake, but they did not harm him. He placed Prahlad under the foot of an elephant, but with his trunk he picked the child up and placed him on his back for a trumpet ride. The fierce king forced Prahlad's mother to administrate poison to the body boy in his foot, but it would not take effect. In a in a sea thing, fierce of frustration, Hiranyakashipur finally picked the boy up in his own hands and curled him to the floor, as though to smash him like a rock. Prahlad, in meditation upon Krishna, the soul of souls remained unheard even by this attack. Where do you get your supernatural powers from? Hiranyakashipu screamed, standing over his son. From the same place you do, Prahlad replied mildly, from God. Hiranyakashipu began to form. God? What is God? Where is your God? My God is everywhere, Prahlad said. Everywhere? Hiranyakashipu dwelled his sword. Yes, everywhere. Is he in this pillar? Hiranyakashipu cried, pointing with his weapon to a nearby column of marble. Yes said Prahlad evenly. At this the mighty Dremon drew back his sword and stuck a pillar unimaginable blow at a mute club. Then just as his sword fell upon it, the pillar burst into a thousand pieces and with a roar that defined half the cosmos, a most beautiful being leaped out from within. This was Lord Narsimha a form of God manifesting curiosity personified. As God is perfect in all things, he was not unable to answer the dread challenges of Prahlad's father, and there now ensures a brief but terrible struggle. Half lion and half man in appearance, nursing a fell upon Hiranyakashipu, who stuck back with all the fiercity of his being, but he was as nothing against the boundless might of God. Lord Narsimha quickly caught him up with his nails and stretched the angry, incurious demon across his lap and then tore him apart. Hiranyakashipu died instantly upon that blood-drenched lap. In this way, as Narsimha was not a man and as the time was twilight, neither night nor day and as the king was killed on the lap of the lord which was neither sea nor air nor land and as he was torn apart by no weapons but the claws of nursing her so one of so none of brahma's promises to hiranyakashipur were broken and yet he was vanquished Prahlad, unafraid, bowed down and offered his profound obeisances before this form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. O oh my Lord, he prayed, I know that you have thousands of forms and that there are as many forms as the Supreme Person as there are species of life in the world. In this way, Prahlad worshipped at the lotus feet of the fiercely half-man, half-lion incarnation of Sri Krishna from whom all living things emanate. As Narsimha, he appeared as the source of all curiosity, just as in the original form of Radha Krishna, he is the source of all love. To Prahlad, the long hard nails of Lord Narsimha and his fierce aspect carried no terror. The rays from your lotus feet, he prayed, are more soothing than 10,000 autumnal moons. 
what I truly fear is the reaction of birth and death in this world, which is world full of bad things. I do not fear your nails, O Lord and Protector, but I fear this world of karma, where the remedies we seek for our ills are worse than the ill itself. And only by taking shelter of you can we become fearless and satisfied. The Lord then was very pleased and he requested him. his devotee ask for his desire. Prahlad replied, Don't ask me to take anything, my Lord. Worship is my duty. If I should take something in return, then I have become a merchant. But the Lord again asked Prahlad to name something that he wanted for. Prahlad, as a devotee, had no personal desire, but the thing he thought of was his father. So he prayed in Narsingha's presence that his father might be pardoned for his offenses and granted liberation. The Lord assured the child Prahlad that not only would his father be liberated from the hellish condition of life in the material world, but that many generations of his family, both in the past and in future, would be granted liberation. Such is the purifying influence of a pure devotee in family. For ourselves, just to hear the narration of Prahlad's activity is auspicious, because just as he fixed himself onto the Lord in remembrance, so can we and thus strike that full eternal blissful freedom from evil which the Lord promises mankind in the Bhagavad Gita. Give up all varieties of religions and just surrender unto me, and in return I shall protect you from all sinful reactions. Therefore, you have nothing to fear about. Bhagavad Gita chapter 18 verse 66 So this was an inspiring story of little Prahlad. Hare Krishna.